for whatever reason, from when Stevens was the coach and then Ime this year, they've just always played the Warriors well. Smart's always played Curry well. They've always had too much size on the wings and they've always had these up and down games where they've just looked really comfortable against them. Kirk Goldsberry tweeted, the Celtics are the only team with a winning record versus the Warriors since Steve Kerr took over in 2014. So I, I don't understand it. I don't, I, I don't really have an adequate basketball explanation other than that. I think because of the wings, I think they just give the smart Tatum Brown thing has just given the Warriors problems over the years. Kerr has a lot of respect for these guys. He coached them, you know, in the, uh, Team USA stuff. I think he really, really likes and respects the team. And the Horford, the Horford Draymond thing is like an interesting little matchup. They just, you go across the board, they really match up well with this team. I was surprised. The Warriors are favored on FanDuel. I was really surprised. I thought this, I know they have home court, but man, you think like the Warriors beat up Denver team, Memphis, no jaw. We talked about this Thursday night. And then the Dallas team that just stopped making threes. Like this Boston team seems like the best team they've played by a considerable margin, I would say. I feel like Boston matches up really well with them. Um, And there's something about the way they defend Golden State that's always been a little different. I did an eye roll when they talked about missing on a Durant to Golden State during the recruitment. I thought it was like such a weird thing because the Celtics... Like shouldn't be happy about coming at second place in a free agent race. But part of it was that Boston felt like they'd sort of unlocked this way to defend Golden State. And I had mentioned it to somebody and they kind of explained to me that Boston does approach Golden State a little bit different defensively. And it's talked about. And because they have these defenders, they have so many switchable guys, especially with this group, that it is a challenging thing for Golden State. But I do think the Vegas part of this has to do with if they make this like they're trying to figure out a way to not get all the money on on Golden State, so they make them a little bit more of a favorite. Because I still think, even though we know it's not the same Golden State team as prime Golden State, which isn't an insult, by the way, it's that there will probably be a lot. I think there's probably a lot of people looking at the Warriors, going, "Oh, here they go again." So the Celtics is this a happy to be there thing, or you think you think no. this team now believes? Because I I actually think they think they are the best team, even yeah, if they didn't always show it. I don't know. Look, they had a harder path than Golden State did. Yeah. And that's what I kept, you know, granted, Middleton was out against Milwaukee, but beating the Bucks in six and seven, and I'm like, you're going to lose to Miami six and seven? Like, how, how's that going to happen? So you should feel tested. The rest is monumental for them. Um, but, you know, this is, it's one of those weird things because it still feels a little new. Like, this is the first version of this Golden State team. And hell, we didn't even get to see it all season long. And this Celtics team, I think, has now proven itself enough getting through the East that you should be able to buy in on it. But it's not, you know, I mean, what, if, what if Boston looks really stagnant in the fourth quarter and Marcus Smart has to ISO everything because Golden State's selling out and, you know, Tatum's running through things where he's getting matched up with Clay and then into, well, not that you switch into Draymond, but mm. you get the point. Like, what, there'll be some version of this where the Celtics offense isn't going to look great. And Curry gets going and Clay gets going. And if it happens in game one, if you pick Boston, you're going to go, oh, I'm in trouble now on this one. Because th- that moment's happening against Golden State where you're going to be helpless. It's going to happen against them offensively, even with Boston's great defense, because it's just who they are. So I don't know how would they respond to it. You would think, well, considering the way they've been tested in the previous two series. Couple good signs if you're the Celtics. A lot of double figure leads throughout the playoffs. I don't know the exact number, but it just felt like in over half the games, they had a 10 plus lead in the second half, would be my guess. It's seven road wins in the three rounds, they th- including three in Miami. So that's not nothing. They had two in Milwaukee. They won do or die games on the road in Milwaukee and in, in, uh, in Miami, which ain't nothing. And that's why I don't. I don't know if home court matters in this series that much because I, I don't think Boston has been an awesome home team either. We've watched them lose. Like you'd think they easily could have lost game one Brooklyn. That was kind of a miracle. And then over and over again, Milwaukee and Miami were able to go in there and take games. The games, that Dallas game near the end of the regular season, they lost at home. There's another one near the end that it just, any kind of close game, it, feel, it felt like they didn't take care of business at home like they normally did. They were weirdly more comfortable on the road. Which I guess if you don't have home court isn't the worst, worst, ta- worst skill to have. And on the flip side, Golden State, like 
How the hell do you know that team game to game? You know, they they could hit 23s any game. I never know what I'm getting from Wiggins. What if Wiggins is just good for two weeks? Like, Wiggins, I think, as weird as this sounds, it, it, all right, how about this? Key role player in each series. I, it has to be Wiggins for the Warriors, I think. Yeah, because I think I know what I'm getting out of everybody else for the most part. Yeah. Um, you need his size. But you you know need what? his defense. You need his rebounding. I, I, might, I might say Looney. I might say Looney because mm. Looney was so good. I keep going back to that game too when all the times he got... We might see more Bielisa in this one. Yes. Because that's one thing that Ime did stay with. He always wanted to stay big when Miami went small. And Miami didn't really have much of a choice. I mean, they're a small team to begin with. But sometimes they'd go even smaller and Van Gundy would point it out. Um, and Ime would stay big with the guys. And Look, I thought Grant had a really good first half. His cuts... And then, man, like Oladipo tried to get him in the baseline, and Grant just stays right up, and Oladipo mm. couldn't get past him. I mean, you know, we give Grant probably enough shit on the pod because, you know, we find him slightly annoying. But I, he, I love him. He's like the little I brother I always wanted. I know you do. And so, and he deserves credit because I thought, you know, he got in foul trouble and all that, but there's just some bigger options here for Boston um, to go up against a Golden State team that hasn't really had to worry about it all that much. And, you know, part of the Memphis series, even though, you know, I thought they were better than them. You know, it was a resurgence of Adams who was on the scrap heap for a good chunk of the playoffs. Because it was like, wait, so Looney could be, because they have no other size, yeah. Looney could be a really important piece of this. Just trying to just trying to keep the other team honest on the rebounds and contests. Offensive rebounds will be big for the Celts. But ultimately, it's the best player in the series. That you, that usually is what works. You know, you had the the ones where it's like Giannis is clearly the best player in round two, but Boston's whole team was better. In this case, the teams are pretty even. And I just think know. they're different. I just think they're different. It's gonna be like it won't be weird, like what the hell's going on in this Miami series. I think there could just be massive swings game to game in this one where you'd think, okay, well, like when when Miami would win, I wouldn't go, how is Boston gonna beat them? Yeah. But I think you could have that. Uh, but I want to get back to the home court thing because I gave you a little bit of shit before the playoffs started. You were talking about the garden and going, you know, it is an advantage. And I started paying way more attention to it throughout when we had the last round of teams. Yeah, You're right. You're right. I mean, Miami, forget it. Milwaukee wasn't what Boston was. Uh, Brooklyn isn't. Um, and the new, the new Golden State setup is just not what Oracle was. It's just not. And everyone will tell you. Yeah, Boston's crowds have been great and the performances have not been great in front of the crowds, which I don't I don't fully understand. 